Hi, it's Finovar here and I want to show you how I decorated my dragon egg with metallic flakes and waxes. I've started with an acrylic egg, transparent one, that uh, I simply put together. It is about 12 cm tall and I use a fabric tape to make sure both parts are not moving anymore. This was the easiest solution I found. It's a simple solution and once your egg is safely together, you can now prepare it for next steps. I picked black uh, heavy gesso from Art Basics collection and I painted the whole egg with one coat of black gesso and dried it completely. Black gesso is a great primer and it's going to work perfectly for us for metallic flakes, waxes and paint. My next step was masking the um, tape using a piece of uh, metallic lace and I used heavy body gel from Art Basics collection to put it safely in place and to secure it, adding extra gel with my uh, brush. To get extra effects, drips on the bottom of the egg, I used my hot glue gun and a glue stick. I created drips, making sure my hot glue was very, very fluid. It's much easier this way. Once the hot glue was already set and cool, I could paint everything again with black gesso and dry it completely. My egg was ready for decoration. I've selected a bunch of embellishments to make a composition uh, on the front of my egg. I wanted to make it more steampunk looking, so there are um, wings and cogs and gears and also some flower elements. I painted them with the same Art Basics black gesso and uh, dried everything with the heat gun to make it permanent. Next step is adding metallic flakes. Uh, there is gilding glue which is dedicated product to the metallic flakes and this one stays stacky for a very long time. I took a portion of my uh, gilding glue and I covered the whole egg, except the trim, uh, with the coat of the uh, gilding glue and then dried it a little bit until it turned completely transparent. It was very, very tacky. A few moments later, using the leftovers of the same gilding glue, I covered the wings and other elements I wanted to put into my composition uh, covered with the metallic flakes. This glue stays sticky and fresh for a very long time. Once the gilding glue is transparent, it is ready for using. You can start adding metallic flakes or any other products you like on the top of it, and they're going to stick beautifully. My choice for the dragon egg, it was a Dublin collection of the metallic flakes from my um, art ingredients, and it's a combination of blue, silver and green. Bit by bit, I uh, was picking the metallic flakes from the container and tapping that on the top of the egg wherever the, ta um, the tacky glue was um, visible and um, this way metallic flakes were sticking very easily. To make sure the flakes are going to stick even better, I used dry a uh, large brush to push the flakes more and more to stick them on the glue. After a few moments, uh, I could use the leftovers of the flakes on the uh, embellishments I covered with the uh, gilding glue and I had beautifully decorated elements to glue on my egg. The smaller wings I wanted to stand out a little bit more, so instead of Dublin metallic uh, flake set, I used pure silver. 
it was um, a little bit of extra contrast. The same was for the little pocket watch. The little secret here is the brush has to be completely dry, otherwise the flakes are going to stick to the brush, not to the embellishments. Very soon elements and egg were ready and they were beautifully shiny. I could go to the next step which was putting the whole um, composition together. My first product to use it was hot glue and the hot glue gun. Hot glue is not really recommended for mixed media because it doesn't stay in place for too long but for the temporary uh, gluing of the dimensional compositions it is helpful. So I attached the wings and part of the embellishments with the hot glue, but later I'm switching to heavy body gel, which is going to hold everything in place perfectly forever. Hot glue is a good solution, but uh, you have to be, of course, very careful when you are using it. And you have to remember this is just temporary. So try not to put too much and uh, of course watch your fingers i had to cut some of my embellishments to make them fit in the place i wanted them to stay i used one of my older scissors for that later i started adding big lumps of um, heavy body gel and making sure all the elements are sticking together nicely A heavy body gel is transparent after drying and it's very very strong uh, sticky medium so it's perfect for dimensional gluing there was empty space in between the wings so I used uh, layers of the 3d foam tape to fill it nicely you can do the same trick um, using cardboard or any other dimensional element which is going to make your composition a little bit more even Bit by bit, I was putting uh, the composition in right order, one layer on the top of another, and then securing everything using first a little bit of the uh, hot glue and later switching to heavy body gel. When you have too much of the gel on your embellishments, you can easily uh, pick it up with your brush. Of course, remember, this is very sticky medium, so make sure your brush is going to sit in the water cup, so it's not going to be completely damaged. I went a little bit crazy with dimensional composition, so I had to put a lot of layers and a lot of gel. But this gel dries quite quickly and you can use your heat gun to help you with that. So it was not long waiting until I could go to the next steps. I wanted to decorate the top of the egg to make it look more steampunk, so I took a good portion of the heavy body gel, nice looking cog, and um, <laughs> embellishment that is very similar to the screw head. So uh, it all looked as it is attached to the egg uh, by the screw.
I glue it all together and the top decoration looks just perfect. For the pebble that was going inside of my pocket watch, I used chunky glitter from my art ingredients collection. And this uh, beautiful blue turquoise glitter, uh, it was um, just perfect uh, and matching the colors of my metallic flakes. So I used the same gilding glue I used for the metallic flakes and simply pressed my mm, pebble on the top of the glitter and later glued it inside of the pocket watch. A bit of the heavy body gel and um, my pebble looks just perfect. After a good moment of drying and making sure the elements are staying safely in place, it was time to work on the details and I picked my uh, Art Alchemy Metallic um, Old Silver Wax and I wanted to um, show the details of the lace and the beautiful drips of the glue that we made. So first I started rubbing the wax with my finger to just highlight, highlight all the details of the embellishments, the hot glue and the lace. Once I was done with that, I switched to the medium-sized brush to get uh, into details a little bit better. I made sure uh, the metallic flakes were blending nicely with the wax, so there was a soft transition between the silver and the metallic flakes, and um, I was making sure I really add enough wax to cover the drips of the glue, and all the important details of the embellishments. Metallic wax is very easy to apply and you can put multiple layers if needed. If you are planning to do that, make sure one layer is more or less dry and then it's easier to put a second one on the top to get better coverage. I wanted to add a bit more detail to the composition, so I decided to use microbeads in metallic silver. I took very sticky gel medium soft gloss gel which is liquid and easy to apply with a brush and I added quite a lot of the gel in the selected parts of the composition. Later I could sprinkle my mm, microbeads on the top of the gel. The gel would be drying um, <laughs> clear so you can't really see it after and um, of course the microbeads are sticking beautifully. Microbeat texture uh, is easy to apply and it dries quickly and you can use your heat gun to make sure it is staying in place. It's a great solution if you have some imperfections you would like to hide in your project.
I made sure my micro beads are completely dry and is safe to work on the next step. This is very important because you don't want to make any mistakes like uh, micro beads going everywhere. So it's better to dry a little bit longer and then work uh, without any stress. My next step is adding a little bit of the antiquing effect and for this purpose I picked Art Alchemy liquid acrylic paint in burnt sienna color. It's beautiful shade of brown and it is reacting with water as long as it is wet. So you can easily place um, the layers of color in the selected places and uh, you can make sure the color is dripping if you want to. With a bit of water the color gets more transparent and of course you can just decide how far you would like to go with antiquing or rusting of your project. I started to add the darker tones in between the micro beads and um, on the edges of my embellishments. I added a little bit of water and repeated the step a couple of times to make sure my brown is nicely saturated. A liquid acrylic paint is permanent after drying, so you can work in stages if you want. This way, um, whatever you like is going to be safe and you can just add extra on the top. I used my brown paint uh, to create um, more of the dimensional effect to highlight all the um, details a little bit more, creating dramatic shadows. It is a very good technique for dimensional projects and if you feel your project feels a little bit flat, adding shadow is a great idea. To make the shadows even darker and deeper, I added a bit of black. Ink black liquid acrylic is semi-transparent and not too dark, so it's a perfect solution if you would like to add a little bit more of the uh, drama to your project, a little bit more of the darker tones. I combined it together with the burnt sienna and I was putting that mostly in the bottom parts of my composition. Using uh, my paints, I also followed the line of the uh, trim and that created a bit of transition between the metallic flakes and the lace the trim. And um, I used it really in a delicate way. I didn't want to cover too much. If I felt I want to remove a bit of the paint, I could use my baby wipe or a wet kitchen towel. Final touches are really important in mixed media projects, so it's really worth it to spend extra time painting or adding delicate um, highlights or working on 
extra textures. After painting, I refreshed my wax a little bit to make sure it is really shiny and the shadows are going to be really dark. And the egg looked really fabulous, so I was happy with the result. I added extra step to make sure the metallic flakes are going to be protected. So I took Fluid Medium from Liquid Acrylic Collection, which is transparent, very fluid gel medium. And I put a coat of this uh, gel medium on the top of the metallic flakes. That dried almost like a transparent, invisible varnish. My only problem was my egg was absolutely not in balance. Um, I forgot about adding some counterbalance when I was working on the composition, so now I had to find a solution. My idea was to put an egg on the, um, on the bottom of an old uh, metal goblet, so it's going to look like an uh, integral part of the um, whole project. I painted the part of the goblet with black gesso and then I was ready to stick it on the top. Of course I dried the gesso perfectly and then I came back to the idea of the 3D foam tape. I didn't want my egg to be uh, stuck on the top of the goblet permanently. I wanted to remove it. Uh, if I need to or maybe change the solution. So I picked something that is possible to remove without breaking the whole project. If you prefer to keep it <laughs> on the top of your um, candlestick or goblet forever, I would really recommend gluing that on with heavy body gel, which is going to keep it there safely. I added uh, two or three layers of the 3D foam tape and my egg was sitting on the top of the goblet really safely. And I love the concept and I love the look of it. I didn't want to really change uh, the look of the metal. It matches perfectly. So my project was ready. I hope you liked my video and you feel inspired to create with metallic flakes and black gesso. If you liked the video, give me thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you didn't do it before. And of course, share the video with your friends. Maybe they will create the project too with you together. Thank you so much for being here in Finavar Studio and check my other videos.